Let's say you plant a PPD and a person comes back in and now they want to find out whether it's positive or negative. The way I kind of think about it is I break people down into their risk group and I think of three risk groups. I think high risk, medium risk, and low risk. And if they're not high or medium, then basically they kind of by default become low risk. That's how it works out. So going to the high risk, there's two ways to think about it, right? Either I'm really worried that they are going to have TB, and that could be someone who I suspect has it. Maybe they have, you know, a very abnormal chest x-ray, or maybe they have lots of fevers, cough, you know, night sweats, things like that, and I really suspect TB. They would fall into high risk, right? Because I worry that they have it. And in fact, even their family members, close contacts. So if, let's say a grandchild of a person who has TB or an uncle or an auntie of somebody who has TB, someone in the household, they are also at high risk of getting TB. So these are folks I'm worried may have tuberculosis. But also in this high risk group, I'm going to put a third group or a third category, which is immunocompromised people. So this is people that do not have a normal immune system. So these folks, it's not that I'm worried that they have TB necessarily, but it's that if they did have TB, gosh, that would be really awful because tuberculosis requires that you have a good immune system. And if they don't have a good immune system, then tuberculosis is going to be devastating for these folks, especially folks with HIV. So in this first group, then the high risk group, either I'm really worried they have it, or I'm worried that if they did get it, they would get really sick with it. And for these folks, a positive test would be in duration. Remember, PPD, you're measuring in duration. Anything above five millimeters, anything above this range would be considered positive. So for example, if someone with HIV comes and they have a PPD of, let's say, six millimeters, then they would definitely be positive. But if it was three, then they would be negative. So this red stuff that I'm kind of filling in, this is the positive range, positive anywhere in here. And anything below that, I'm going to write it in white, down here, this would be negative. So anything below five, and if it's exactly five, then that's still positive. So who's in the medium range? These folks, one group would be people coming from an endemic country. Let's say they recently came across from China or you know parts of Africa. If they're coming from a country where tuberculosis is very common or endemic, then they are also in that medium risk group. Also folks that live or work in large groups. So think about nursing homes or uh, let's say a jail or an army barracks. Anyone that lives or works in these kinds of places in a large group setting, I'll say large group setting, is at risk for getting TB because of course it spreads from person to person very quickly and if you're around a lot of people you're upping your chances. Similarly, people that are in healthcare, so anyone working in a hospital setting, because of course people with TB often come to healthcare settings to be taken care of. And so if you're in a healthcare setting working as a nurse or a doctor, uh, then you also are in the medium risk. And I myself, because I'm a physician, am in the medium risk for this reason. I'll put a few more up here. IV drug use. This also puts you in the medium risk. And then let me actually switch gears. And just as before where I said, well, I'm also worried, specifically worried about certain groups. Here, I'm very worried about children less than four years of age. So if you're less than four years of age, meaning if you're three or two or one, those children, they may not have any other reason for getting TB, like the people I just mentioned, like healthcare setting or endemic country where it's around. But if they did get it, it would be particularly problematic because young kids don't have great immune systems. And also, people that are actually fighting other diseases. So we call those comorbidities. Let's say you have already gotten a disease like diabetes, or let's say your, your, your kidneys aren't working properly. If you already have other diseases, then you're also at risk because if you did get TB, it would be even tougher to fight it off. And for all of these folks, 10 millimeters or above is considered positive. I didn't make an exhaustive list. There actually are a few other ones, but I tried to highlight some of the most important ones uh, on this list. And for example, then, just to make sure we understand how to utilize this, let's say you have a person who is three years old, and that person comes in with a PPD of 12 millimeters. Well, that would be positive here. But if it was only eight millimeters, it would be negative. So that's kind of how you would use this 
graph. So down here, then we have anyone else. Anyone that doesn't fit into the other categories fits into this final one. So this is the low risk category. And for these folks, 15 millimeters or greater are needed to be considered positive. And so if you have someone that, let's say, is very healthy and doesn't fit into any of the other things that we just talked about, and their PPD is 20 millimeters, then they would be considered positive. But if it was only, let's say, 13 millimeters, somewhere in this other range down here, then they would be considered negative. So you basically measure the induration, and then you kind of think about what risk group a person falls into, high, medium, or low, and then you kind of organize it using these graphs. Very easy, right? So above 5 or above 10 or above 15 tells you which is considered positive versus negative. And a couple of questions people always ask is they think, well, what if someone falls into two of these categories? What if they're, uh, let's say, a below four years old? Let's say we're talking about a three-year-old, so they you know, have this one. But you're also really worried that they have TB, so they're in this one. Well, if you ever have someone that falls into two categories, you have to go with the more conservative approach and say, well, if they meet the high-risk category, I'm going to use that one to decide if they're positive or negative. So in this case, a three-year-old who I suspect has TB, automatically I would have to go with this top one because I suspect TB. Simple as that. And the other question that often comes up is, what about BCG vaccine? This is a vaccine that some countries offer to their citizens to help prevent disseminated or spread out TB, uh, especially a problem among young babies. So what if someone has had BCG vaccine? And it's very clear, the Centers for Disease Control has been very clear on this point. They say, you do not need to interpret the PPD with this in mind. Ignore the BCG vaccine completely. In other words, when you're trying to figure out whether someone's PPD is positive or negative, just rely on the high, medium, and low risk criteria that we've talked about. Do not worry about the BCG vaccine. That should not affect your decision.